sliding away there. Andy, you have to compete with a variety of software companies in the community that have great ideas. I know a couple of them have slides and they have different kind of activities that you can do. Uh, and they have nights out, they go and do some crazy fun stuff, but even though it's cold, they go outside and snow and do some goofy. <laughs> Um, how do you compete with the other companies in the area? Because don't you have to have something special that kind of warms my heart? We do a little bit, and we offer some people it's chocolate milk, and for some people it's beer. We have both of those things. We don't have a slide, but we have some other fun stuff there. Um, and then we have some things that are more traditional, like our Christmas tree lights, which are really fun. Um, and then we have some things that are more culture of you know, how flexible are you as a workplace? Um, really, you know, what is the essence of the team you're working with? Are you learning from the people you're working with every day? Do they strive to make you better human beings every day? I think so much of what we're working on is how do we how do we give that? I think that um, I'll just wish all this the best software company in town. <laughs> if you want to something to work there. Um, you can say that loudly. You yeah, don't have to say it. No. <laughs> if Jake were here, he would say it and say it loudly. <laughs> A poor stand-in for Jake. He's very <laughs> animated and fun. Our founder, um, but it, but it is. You know, it's how do you do? It, it's not just about painting your oranges red and calling them apples, right? You have to change the roads. Or what is the foundation of your organization, and, and truly make it a place where people want to come? The fun stuff will maybe attract them there, but who you really are is what's going to keep you keep you in that. Thank you. You do have index cards on your tables. If there's a specific question, Jane is collecting them and will bring them to me and I'll articulate the question. I know the mayor for Horace is what will bring them to Horace. I don't know who would come to Horace for It's a small city. You only have one bar. You've got to get more stuff. To, uh, <laughs> Patrick, you know, sometimes I uh, one time I uh, taught a class in senior high, just uh, talked about life choices, what we do and where we go. And I asked the students that in the class, how many do you know where you're going you know, next year? What are you going to do when you graduate from high school? And I only had 50% of the kids raise their hand and say, I know what I'm going to do. I know what I'm going to do. So 50% of the 18-year-olds that were graduating had no idea what they were going to do. How do you help the high school kids choose a path that they want to go down? And obviously, some of them don't know whether they want to go to M State or NDSU. Or they don't know where they want to go. But how do you help them uh, figure out? Hey, what, what what should I do next? Year? Yeah. So there's a lot of different there's a lot of different ways to do that. Um, and some of them I think are driven uh, within the school, but I think a lot of those also depend on involvement of employers in the area. So when we're working with the school, we have an application that we rolled out to students where they basically put in the things that they like doing in high school, uh, the classes that they're into, the activities that they do, hobbies that they're into, and we use that to help match them to employers and to careers. Because we want students to understand that all of those different things you can use to figure out what is a good fit for you. Um, one of the examples, you, you might have a student that isn't a very good student in class, but maybe they taught themselves how to write code for their friends uh, to coordinate like Dungeons and Dragons game night or something like that. That student is going to be a great fit for Bushel. But that student might not know that Bushel exists. So the first thing is like, how do we help students capture that information and make better decisions so that they at least know what their skills are and what companies might be willing to uh, meet them or what careers they might be a good fit for? The second thing is, is then connecting that student to Bushel or Bobcat or Sanford or whatever, uh, Gate City. How do we help create those connections so that that student can meet somebody, they can maybe have a real world experience at that company, maybe an internship or a summer job. All of those things are going to help that student then decide, is that company a company I want to be with? Do I like that career? Do I like their culture? And is that some someplace that I can see myself being? And one of the things that I think is so important about all of this is, I use the word connections a lot. I think it's so important for our students to feel connected to their employer to their coworkers, to the mission of the company, and also to the community. And I think those are the things that at the end of the day are gonna drive retention. A salary is awesome and it's gonna matter like to get somebody in the door and that slide is great for brand and it actually does a very good job getting people in the door. But if you don't have those connections, then it's not gonna, it's not gonna last. And what we wanna do is how do we create those connections before the student has even graduated high school? So that when that student is getting ready to graduate, they have a relationship with the company, they have a connection with the job, and they are starting to identify, well, where would I go to school, and, 
and what's the long-term future here? Um, I think those things are all important, but it takes people at the school level, and I think it takes employers to get involved and connect and reach out and get with those students and start to start to develop a relationship with them. So what if you're an introvert? I mean, how do you fight that introvert that has a connection with their iPhone but don't have a connection with other people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you help them traverse that introvert life? Yep. And not, not that software solves everything, but this is where I think our platform can help because we have a process where a student can reach out to an employer within the platform. So it's maybe not at a career fair. It's maybe not at a social event, but they can still raise their hand. Because honestly, there are a lot of careers where the people that are doing those jobs are introverts. And actually, they themselves might not necessarily be good at talking to students or getting connected with them. Uh, people that show up at career fairs representing companies tend to be extroverts. Uh, an introvert would probably have a miserable time at a career fair. <laughs> Um, but there are ways to create connections. And another thing is helping a student that is an introvert, that actually is a secret sauce to being successful at certain jobs. There are certain jobs where actually being an introvert is awesome. So how do we even help a student understand that? So instead of them feeling like something's wrong with me because I don't like talking to people, I'm never going to get connected because I'm not, I don't go work the room. Um, there are jobs and people just like you, and here they are, and here's some careers that you might want to be, uh, check out, and here's how you get connected. That's what we want to do. Thank you. Heather, you know, you sometimes think of the banking industry. We got so many banks in town. We got all these banks in town. You've got to compete for that workforce. But what is my goal? Am I going to work at the bank 35, 40 years? I mean, bank teller is kind of boring, isn't it? What is it that you're going to do to entice me to stay with you for 30 years? Which I probably won't, right, Christian? I'll do five career changes at least uh, for my career. It has a good job culture. <laughs> good job culture. Yeah. Gatesby Bank is the best bank. <laughs> <laughs> So what, Good what, thing they're not software to be able, <laughs> then we'd have to have a mediator. <laughs> we have cookies. No. No. Um, I completely agree. Not having um, a slide, we do have cookies. Having a culture that you truly live by, as, as we've kind of mentioned, um, you, your culture cannot be created by a marketing team. It cannot be the words on your wall. It has to be what every single team member lives and breathes by the mission. For Gates City Bank, it's a better way of life. It's such an easy, fun tagline for us all to really buy a piece of that and, and act on that. And what we've learned, especially about our younger talent, is that, in fact, the statistic is 62% are looking for their maybe first jobs out of college for really that purpose. And Christian mentioned it, beyond salary, it's a purpose. How can we carry this out? Um, we also give diamond rings every five years. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we do, we have people that have worked at HP Bank for upward, we have more than one that celebrated 45 and one that just celebrated 50 years this last year. Wow. And of course, you know, starting as a teller, but there are so many departments and so many different directions that you can go at our bank. And just like you were saying, Patrick, um, it's educating our young people all of the different things that they can do in the bank. 